Hello Ranger Point Precision friends and family and a special howdy to all you Space Cowboys. In today's video we're going to be installing the Henry Pewview Handguard. Now this video is going to stand as your ultimate resource. If you have any issues with it, please make sure to email us at support at rangerpointprecision.com or use the contact form at the top of the website. We answer emails pretty much seven days a week as often as we can. So now let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open the action. We're going to inspect this firearm, make sure there is no ammunition in it. We're going to make sure that there is no ammunition on the workbench or within our wink span because we owe that to ourselves and those around us. So straight out of the box, you are going to have a handguard. This handguard is the same whether it is a pistol caliber or rifle caliber Henry that you are placing this on. You're also going to have a heat shield. This heat shield is going to be the same regardless of whether you have pistol caliber or rifle caliber. Now, you will have one of two optics rails. Now, I'm showing you this in case you've ordered the incorrect kit. There is one that is specific to the pistol caliber and there is one that is specific to rifle caliber Henry's. You'll notice the rifle caliber one is longer and has four holes here, whereas the pistol caliber is shorter and has three holes for the top of the receiver. So in case you've ordered the incorrect one, this will help you identify which one you have. And just to ensure that you have the correct hand guard, it's going to be marked for H for Henry, and that is not going to matter whether you have pistol or rifle caliber. The hand guard is the same. Now for the included hardware, we have got four heat shield screws. These four heat shield screws, you'll be very obvious here in just a little bit where we're putting these. We're going to have some optics rail screws, and this is going to depend on whether you have rifle caliber or pistol caliber. If you have rifle caliber, you will have four of these smaller screws. If you have pistol caliber, you will have three of these smaller screws. These other screws right here go toward the front of the optics rail and land in top of the heat shield. Now for the handguard hardware. We're gonna have an Allen key. We're gonna have two screws here that go into the factory tenon. You'll notice that we don't have a tenon. Don't freak out if you guys have done this before. We've decided to go with the factory tenon and save you guys all of that sanding and the headache. So these four right here will go through the side of the handguard. We'll install those in a little bit. And all they do is touch off on the side of the barrel to keep this handguard nice and solid. And then I do suggest using either blue or purple Loctite. What you'll do is before you even get started is go ahead and put that blue or purple Loctite on all of your threads. That way it can go ahead and start getting set up. I'm not going to put it on this because this rifle comes apart all the time. So it's going to be up to you to go ahead and apply your Loctite at this moment. As for tools, you're going to need a bench block. You're going to need a non-marring hammer. This is an east wing flooring hammer, but it definitely works because we've got our nice silicon cups there and it's not going to mark up our rifle. Then this right here, we do not need this big expensive set, but simply what you're going to need is an assortment of flatheads that fit your gun and possibly some Allens if you want to use a kit like this. If you don't have this, it's no big deal. It just makes the job really easy. So just for reference, your X models are going to look like this. We're going to have a couple of other different variations, but what we're getting after are these two screws. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and remove our rear sight. Your Henry X model is going to have this little set screw that is for your windage and it will come right out. Now, if you have a model that doesn't have this little set screw, what you're going to do is you're going to use a non marring hammer and or a Delrin punch to drive your dovetail out. Now you pistol caliber guys are going to have to do something that rifle caliber guys won't have to do. Pistol caliber guys, you're going to have to go in here and find this hidden set screw underneath the trigger guard plate. What that hidden set screw does is holds this outer magazine tube here. And we're going to have to remove that so that we can get our hand guard off. So first thing we're going to do is double check, make sure this thing is unloaded. This is the second time we've done that and we owe that to everyone around us. So now right back here at the buttstock, first thing we're going to do is we're going to take an appropriate size flathead and we are going to remove this screw. 
Now, if you have a Ranger Point Precision Takedown, then that is a plus because you didn't need a flathead. So we're gonna take this screw out. We're gonna set it aside. We're gonna remove the buttstock. Well, that was a little tight on there, but boom, there she is. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the hammer is in the home position. We're gonna pull the trigger. We're gonna let this hammer down. So that removes all of the tension right here off of your hammer spring. Now you just take this, push it, that was under just a little bit of pressure, not too bad. Set that aside. Now we've got to get in here and take our trigger guard plate off. This trigger guard plate has got one screw here and one screw here that actually doubles as the hammer screw. So let's take our appropriate size flathead. Let's kick our action open just like so. And we're gonna take our lever takedown screw out. Now, I need you to pay attention. There are some potential oopsies moments here, and we don't want you guys to go screwing stuff up and need to have to contact us because something's goofed. But what I like to do is I'll take this takedown screw. You notice there's a hole that it normally goes into right there in the lever. Put that in there like that. That way that thing won't roll off on you. And you can also take and use your loop as a way to hold parts. See that? So now we've got that first screw out of the way. We're gonna take our hammer screw out. We can actually push our bolt back in. I'm gonna relieve this hammer screw real quick by pushing that detent that normally gets pushed by the lever. That way you can let that back down. So let's take our appropriate size flathead. Let's remove this screw. That's him. So I'm going to take this one, set it aside. Now, right here, we've got another screw right there in the bottom. So we're going to take this screw and we're going to go ahead and loosen it. Now, I don't want you to just go yanking the trigger guard plate out of here. There are some parts in here that you really have to watch for. And I will be showing you how to keep those together. So let's go ahead and slide this whole assembly out as one. That comes out just like that. Now, this right here, this trigger guard plate, I don't want you to do anything crazy with it. I want you to keep this side, the ejection side port up. That way you don't have to deal with any of these parts falling out. There is a big staple looking piece right here that'll fall out and cause you guys quite a bit of issues if you let that fall out. And of course, when we go back with this, I'll show you how to put your transfer bar safety back into your hammer. But we're gonna set these aside for now. What we're after is this one set screw. Now we're in here where we're gonna find that little hidden set screw. Right there that dude is. It is a 560 force, and I am gonna take the appropriate sized Allen and just back it out. Now you don't have to take it all the way out because basically all you did was just go ahead and pull it. It's no longer touching that magazine tube. So real quick, there is a potential oopsies moment. If you roll this over, you're gonna drop out your locking lug. This locking lug is gonna have a spring right there in the middle of it. Make sure that that spring goes in there. And this whole thing is offset to where it'll only go in one way. So if you do have that oopsies moment, then you will take your locking lug and it will slide in there. Like I said, only one way will it fit and you'll be able to see that it is spring loaded back and forth in there. Now this part is just a little unnerving. We are going to be beating on this firearm. We're gonna remove this tenon right here that holds your outer magazine tube. The first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and pull this and set this aside. That is your inner magazine tube. And then we're going to drive this out. Now this one being an X model, this plastic fits pretty tight right here. This forearm fits rather tight. Now your end cap models, basically the other Henry's, it doesn't matter, the hardware mounting is the same. You're just gonna take your little end cap off and then the hand guard comes off easily. This part, we're gonna just go ahead and give this a little tap. The cool thing is, is right here you've got a little place for a sling and that is also gonna be your point of contact for swinging your hammer and bumping that to get just a little gap right here at the receiver. Now that little bit of a gap is gonna allow you to get this driven out. So we're gonna take our bench block, we're gonna set that in there, and we're going to support it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drive the magazine 
dovetail out right here, this tenon. So we're just going to take that. And boom, there it is. Now you're just going to take and pull that off, set it to the side. Then we'll take our magazine tube out, slide it this way, set that aside. Then we've got to remove the rest of our handguard, and all it does is it slides off. There's a big groove right here with the factory tenon, and that tenon lets that slide out. Boom, so now we've got it. Now our factory tenon will move around a little bit. If you are so inclined, you can put some Loctite in there. At this point, we're gonna need our barreled receiver with our factory tenon. We're gonna lay this on its side. We're gonna need our outer magazine tube and our magazine tube tenon here. So we're gonna take the one that has the small hole that goes in the receiver. The large hole here is for your loading gate that goes toward the muzzle. So we're just going to take and slide this into the receiver here. Give it a little wiggle. We shouldn't have to do any tapping at this point. Just some wiggling. And then make sure that this is facing upward. We're going to take our magazine tube tenon here. We're going to slide it onto the end of it. So we're going to get this lined up with this dovetail in our barrel. And we're going to drive it back home. Now the cool thing about this is, is this factory tenon slides just a little bit and allows you to get that lined up in that groove. And there I have got that lined up in that groove. So we're going to make sure that everything's nice and level before we go driving this thing back home. Of course we're going to use our bench block and our non-marring hammer and we're going to very tentatively hit right here. I don't really want to hit way out here because what you'll do is twist the whole thing. I just want to tap this until that starts going into that dovetail just like that. You see that? That fell right into place. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and get our hand guard. For this part, we're gonna need our hand guard and our hand guard hardware. Now, I want you to notice the orientation of this hand guard. If you look, we are lined up here and the big screw hole is lined up with the tenon. We get lots of nine o'clock and midnight emails where the guys are saying that uh, it doesn't line up. It doesn't line up. Well, on this PewView handguard, you're gonna notice this forward angle and the QD sockets here for the sling are gonna face the muzzle. So we have all of this assembled and we're ready to go. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take our handguard and we're gonna slide it over the outer magazine tube. And then we're gonna finagle this until this all lines up. So there we go, that all lines up. And boom, now we're gonna need our screws. And with our dovetail lined up, we're gonna take our pan head screws here and we're gonna put this into the hand guard and we're gonna thread that into the factory dovetail. Then we're gonna take and roll this over, double check alignment, that is aligned. And we're going to take another one of the pan head screws and it is going to go straight in through the side here and we are going to just snug it up. We're really not putting any final torque on anything right now. This right here is just to help with keeping everything together. It's kind of like a third set of hands. So that is just snugged up. Now we're going to take these four set screws right here. And these four set screws, they go into this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole. Now you have to be especially careful not to cross thread these. So you guys that have the big screwdrivers, you probably don't want to use that because there's a potential to cross thread this. We have the included Allen key in the hardware that we're going to use. And we're going to put that right here on an angle. And all this does is go in and just kisses off on the side of the barrel. Though, right now, we still have a heat shield to attach. We're not gonna put any tension on that screw. We're just getting it into place. Now we're gonna take the one that fell into the hand guard earlier. We're gonna slide this into here. And again, it comes in at an upward angle. That right there will get you screwed in. And then we're gonna insert the two that are left into this front part here above the factory tenon. 
Now this right here literally just goes in and touches off on the barrel, but we're not doing that at this moment. Like I said, we have to keep everything untensioned so that the heat shield will go on just fine. We're gonna take our final set screw. We're gonna run him home. Sorry that my hands are in the way. You're still getting the gist of what I'm doing. Now it's time for our heat shield. The correct orientation of this heat shield, this is gonna face the sky. These two screwed holes back here are gonna face back toward the receiver, and this slant is gonna face toward the muzzle. So now let's go ahead and set this down on here. And boom, there that is. Now it is time for the hardware. So now we have our four heat shield screws. The heat shield is lined up. We've got all the holes completely lined up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a 330 seconds. I'm just gonna use just the tip here because I do not want to cross thread any of this. If anything feels forced, stop. Do not force it, do not cross thread because the quality of your install hinges greatly upon this hardware being in and having a good bite. So that side is started. We're gonna roll this over. We have these visually lined up. We're gonna take our other two. We're gonna run those in. So just to get this off the bench, it's taking up room. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. No big deal to go ahead and put your inner magazine tube in, rotate it, and lock it into place. Something that I want you to see is this is a little proud on one side versus the other. Now these little set screws that we installed previously that go in and touch off on the side of the barrel are gonna help us set that tension. So since this one is a little proud this way, I'm gonna use this backside screw to pull it until it gets even. And so all I'm gonna do is use my eyes to make sure that the hand guard is drifted and centered right there. So now all I do is I'll take this other side and run it down until it touches off on the barrel. And all that'll do is lock that in and keep this hand guard from being askew one side or the other. Now this one is a pistol caliber and it has three screws. If you have a rifle caliber, you will have a fourth screw. Now these are just to simply keep junk out of the receiver and we're gonna take and remove these. Removal of this is necessary to get the receiver rail to fit. So one, two, and then three. And like I said, you rifle caliber guys will be spinning a fourth one out. This is just in case you've ordered the incorrect kit. This is the rifle caliber rail. This is the receiver rail that'll fit your 30, 30, 45, 70, 360 buck hammer, etc. rifle calibers. This one right here is gonna have three holes and this is gonna fit your 357, your 44, your 45 Colt. So if you've ordered the incorrect kit, you're gonna have three holes versus four holes. If you've ordered the correct kit, then we're gonna go ahead and install this. This is gonna be the correct orientation for your optics rail. This big long slot is gonna to go toward the heat shield, which is going toward the muzzle. These three screw holes are gonna go into the top of the receiver here. If you have the rifle caliber, it will be four. That is the only difference. Let's go ahead and lay this here. This is the hardware for our optics rail. We've got two that go into the heat shield and then we have three that go into the top of the receiver. Rifle caliber guys, again, you'll have four. These are previously Loctited, as I had stated earlier. We're gonna start dropping those into our receiver rail and go ahead and start running it down. Now, we don't want anything tight yet. Like I said, we may have to do some tweaking. And I'm just putting the three little screws there that go into the top of the receiver. I'm going to take a 330 seconds bit, that way I can't over torque it because like I said earlier, we do not want to strip anything. We don't want to cross thread. We don't want to booger anything up. We just want a really nice installation. And now those two screws are in, all of our receiver screws are in. It's time to put this gun back together. 
You pistol caliber guys are going to go ahead and want to tighten up your magazine tube. We're not going to tighten it down so hard that it crushes it. It's not very substantial metal. We just want it to basically go in there and touch off on that hole. Now, let's get ready to put our trigger guard plate back in. Now we have our locking lug. Make sure that the spring is still in there. You see that spring inside? Now this locking lug, this hook, is going to face back toward the rear tangs and it will only go one way. When you push it in there and you feel that it's spring-loaded, you've done your job correctly. And of course, we're going to need to put our trigger guard plate and our hammer back into place. Now, I'm choosing to do this on a white background because I want you to see what I'm doing. You have your transfer bar right here. That transfer bar is actually going to slide up into the face of the hammer. There is a little pin right here that that transfer bar will set behind. And you basically just go ahead and run this thing in like this. And then you align these screw holes in the trigger guard plate and the hammer. Now let's put this into the gun. So we've got all of this finagled back together and what we're going to do is we're going to slide this up into the receiver. The hammer goes into this groove right here in the back of the, the receiver and then we're going to line everything up. So now we're going to take our hammer screw and it goes right here through where the hammer was. So now you remember you have to get everything wiggled back into place and sometimes I find once I get it mostly there, don't be abusive, but give that hammer screw a tap and it'll go the rest of the way in. Now that wasn't to screw it up, that was literally just to get it past that last little ledge there. So then we're going to go ahead and run this down and don't go full tight, we're just still just going snug. Now we're going to need our screw that goes into the front of our trigger guard plate here. We'll drop that down in there. We'll run this home. That's feeling nice. Now it's time to put our lever back in the gun. So we're going to take our lever and our lever screw. Remember I took put the takedown screw right there in that hole. Works out pretty good. I'm going to lay the bolt back just about that much. Take this whole thing, slide it up in there, take our screw, whoops, try to. We'll take our screw, put him in there, and run that on home. We're literally on the back stretch now. Things are looking great. Close the bolt, we're going to pull the trigger, relax our hammer, now we're going to need our hammer spring and the stirrup. Now this beehive hammer spring goes right there on that strut. You'll slide it on the end of it. And then there are two holes in this. The big hole is going to be the one that the strut goes through. And I've got a little tip for you guys that works out pretty daggum good. I like to take this like this and then you'll take a hollow tip and just push this thing forward until it locks in just like that. Now let's go ahead and check and make sure that our hammer works. Hammer works great. Check the function of our lever. That works great. It's time for the buttstock. Now at this point, we're ready for the buttstock. This one's a factory buttstock, or you can replace it with a Ranger Point Precision buttstock. But for right now, we're just gonna pop this one on here, give her a smack from the back there, take our takedown screw, poke it in here. Then we're gonna take our flathead screwdriver, and go ahead and run that on home. Now at this point, everything's installed. It's time for final torque. We're gonna push these in until they just barely touch off on the bottom of the barrel. Let's go ahead and go over to this other side. Screw that one in. Now it's time for final torque on the tenon screws. I'm gonna do this one, roll it over, and then I am gonna bump it on this side. And since we've got the heat shield all ready to go, we're going to take and go ahead and screw the heat shield down. It's literally just hand tight. I'm not throwing a lot of torque on there. You're going to let the Loctite do its job and keep these in place. So let me go ahead and hit this one. And hit this one. So now let's go to the top ones and get those tight. And again, hand tight, letting the Loctite do its job and keep everything in place. Then we're going to go back and then just snug up the receiver rail. 
So from us here at Ranger Point, we hope that you were successful with your installation and you are now happy with your new PewView handguard. If you have any further issues, please use the support email listed below or go to the contact form at the top of the website and send us an email. We try to answer emails seven days a week. Sometimes we're sleeping, but most of the time we're trying our best to get everything sorted out for all of you. Y'all have a wonderful day. We'll see you next video. I think I'm going to go enjoy my little PewView handguard.